Hi everyone. Am I audible, Priyanka? Yes, Mukesh. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Mukesh Kala. I am working as a senior RPA developer, and today I am going to start with the topic: how we can use a robotics enterprise framework for a linear process. Okay. So this is our agenda for today. First, we are going to see the introduction. Post that we are going to create a process without using the RE framework. Then we'll analyze the things what what things were missing in the implementation. Post that we are going to convert the official robotics template to a template that can accommodate a linear process. And at the end, we are going to see what are the benefits that we have leveraged with the help of the robotics enterprise framework. Okay. So starting with robotics enterprise framework. So as we know, RE framework is a template which is provided by UiPath Studio, and it is best fitting for a process for wherever we require logging, exception handling, application is initialization. All these things are already taken care by a robotics enterprise framework. This is basically used to handle a complex business scenarios. Robotics process framework is. Supposed to work best with the non-linear process or which are having queue or transaction items. So when I say queues or transaction item, for example, you have a process of let's say support ticketing. So then the support ticket, all the ticket number becomes a queue for you, and you process each of the item one by one. So that's why it is said that it is best suited whenever you want have you don't have a non-linear process. Okay, so it best works with queues and the transaction item. Now a question arises. can we leverage our re template to for a linear process so if i have a process where i have to just go to a website scrape the data and when i say linear process it means that the process is going to execute only once so the process will start it will do some of the execution then it will do the validation and then finish the execution so this is a linear process so can we use a re template for a linear process the answer is yes we can use the re framework to extract the data from a linear process also so in this video or sorry in this tutorial we are going to see how we can do that okay so i'm audible right priyanka yes mukesh yeah okay so we all are aware of the acme site okay so i quickly go to the acme url okay so let's see what exactly we want to do in the linear process so we want to log into the acme site we want to go to the healthcare then we want to click on the download daily appointment and then we want to extract all this data in an excel sheet so assuming that this is a linear process we want to automate so if i have to automate this process without using the robotics enterprise template how do i do that so this basically can be done with the help of a flow chart with the help of the sequence so let's try to do that one i'll open my yapat studio i just check okay my assistant did connected and this is my orchestrator so i'll just log out and point it to the home page copy this url go to your ipad studio okay so i'll i'm in the your ipad studio i just create a process which i call sample linear for the demo of oh, ari okay i'll just create it i'll just do the steps a little quicker and that post that we'll see what what are the things exactly we get from the ari framework Okay, I go to a new sequence. Leave it blank. Okay, the first thing we have to open a browser. So I take an activity called open browser. We type the URL and we pointed the browser to the <coughs> Internet Explorer. Next thing is. we will have to type the username and the password so i'll go and take a type into activity point it to the this email id where i will type the user id and then to type the password we have an activity which we call the type secure text and then type secure text we will point it to the password field 
once the user id and the password are typed next thing we want to do is hit the login button so i can go ahead and here and then i'll point it to the login button now for <clears throat> the acme one i have stored my credential in the orchestrator so this is my uipath cloud orchestrator i go to assets so this is the name of the asset acme credential i have already created in the orchestrator so i'll go back to the studio i'll take an activity which we call get credential so this is the activity which we use in uipath studio to get the credential from orchestrator so we have to pass the asset name here i'll pass the asset name and this activity will give me a username and the password so i hit control k create a variable for username control k hit a variable for password okay and in the username field we'll type username and in the password field we'll type the secure text so this will go here and when we type the username we want the field to get empty so we'll just check this property empty field so this means that whenever it is typing anything it will just clear everything which was available okay let me just go ahead and run this one file okay so the bot has navigated next step it has fetched the credential from the orchestrator and login okay so we are in the acme dashboard so the next step was we have to get the data from the healthcare and this guy right so how do we do that for that we will take an activity which i call attach browser i'll attach it to this window next i will take an click activity i'll click it to healthcare one more click activity so this is the linear process which i am implementing without the ru framework and i want to open the sub menu so i press f2 that will pause the recording for 3 second i have opened the sub menu and then i'll click on the daily download so the bot will do and it will click like this right so the next step is i have to extract all this data so this is a table structure to extract the table structure what we have to do is we have to go ahead and take a data scraping wizard so i will again attach the browser point it to the new screen and then inside it i will take a data scraping wizard i'll point it to the first element ui path will <coughs> identify that i am uh, trying to extract a table okay and finish do i want to extract all the pages yes and where is the next button this is the next button okay fair enough i will just drag and drop this inside this guy and once the data is extracted we want to write it to an excel file so i take a right range and i will just name the file to data.xlsx so uh, i have not passed the path so that means it will create the excel file in the project directory and for the data table i will type the extract data table so if i go inside the data scraping so data scraping output is stored in the variable call extract data table so i can put this guy here and extract data table okay so this completes the linear process so let's say if i just go back to the acme i got this guy close this i'll close this also and so let's say uh, i have completed a development of the any of the linear processes let's run the file what has opened the url it has typed the password <coughs> login import click to the daily appointment now the data scraping is working it is extracting the data from all the pages so you can see at the url the second page is getting extracted and once all the data is extracted it will write the data to an excel uh, sheet
okay let's go back to the project let's first check the output okay execution was successful let's go to the project hit refresh and there is a file called data.xlsx if i just open the file <coughs> Okay, so I was able to successfully get all the data which I wanted from the linear process. So I have implemented a linear process without an RE framework, right? Let me go back to the presentation. Just do it in the run mode. Now let's see some of the things which were missing in my implementation, which we have just seen, right? So let's discuss that one. So if you'll see there was no exception or error handling. So what happens when we first time run the process and let's say Internet Explorer is not working? or consider a scenario i was doing the data scraping and the bot was not able to find a selector i was clicking on the login button and the selector changed or any of the exception might occur right we have not implemented any type of exception or error handling in the linear process next our business and the system logic was in a uh, same workflow so we don't have the separate business and the separate system logic what that means if if tomorrow someone says me that i want to change the business logic now i don't want the reports i want you to extract some other data from the acme side can i do that no because i have mixed everything in one xaml and if i have to make the changes it's a very complex thing so my business and the system logic is not separate and it's in one xaml file only Okay, so this is an important one. What happens if tomorrow I don't want to use the asset which I have used from the orchestrator? If tomorrow that asset is being changed by some developer, so I have to come to the UiPath Studio, change the asset name hardcodedly because we have hardcoded the asset name, right? So if that is changed in the in the orchestrator, I have to come here and change. Second scenario, let's say tomorrow UiPath change the Acme URL to something Acme one two three dot Excel Acme one two three dot com. So where do I change that? So if we we'll, you will see our workflow, we have this, we have passed this URL here, right? So if anything changes in this URL, we have to come again, redeploy, do the changes here, and then again, go back to the orchestrator and then do all the changes, right? So we don't have flexibility of updating the assets or the settings. So the file which we have stored that was stored with the data.xlsx. If tomorrow the business says, I don't want to store it with data.xlsx, I want to store the file as acme underscore reports. How do I do that? I don't have flexibility of changing that, right? I have to come back to the code, do the changes. Next, the process was success or failure. I have no notification. I have to manually go to the uh, this output logs and see whether the process was success or failure. So that notification was not sent to me there was no logs nothing was there right there was no logging mechanism how do i know whether which step bot has executed whether the bot was successfully able to log in whether the process was failed there was no kind of log neither info information log so i have not written any of the logs even if i publish this process to the orchestrator it won't give me anything because i have not put any logging mechanism Retry mechanism. Let's say if the, there is a business requirement where the process, if the data extraction is failing first, now the business wants us to retry the process twice or thrice. How can I do that? As of now, I have to come and change the code, right? So these were some of the things which were missing in the implementation. So all of the things which we were just seeing are already provided by robotics enterprise template. So when we go to the project of home, so when you will see there is something called robotics enterprise template, right? So if I just click this guy, robotics enterprise template, I'll just type it to Acme for demo process. Okay, so robotics enterprise template is given by UiPath that gives all those features and flexibility. But again, it best suits to the requirements where the process is a linear flow. It means where the process is not linear and where we have transactions and queue item involves. So in this video, in this tutorial, we are going to see how we can use it for a linear process. So if I just open the main.xaml, so this is how the main for robotics enterprise template looks like. So whenever you execute any or the process, not even the RE framework or any of the process from the orchestrator, the main is the first file that gets triggered. So let me just talk a high level about the robotics enterprise template here. So robotics enterprise template, works on the concept of state machines. So we have four states here, one, two, three, four, which we call initialization and process, get transaction and the process transaction. So this is the start node. First, this is the state machine. So 
what happens when the process is executed the main is executed from the orchestrator it goes to the start and then it goes to this state so what is this state initialization directly this state will get executed what happens in the initialization so we have something called a configuration file that, uh, that i'll just talk a little bit later we have a configuration file configuration file is read then it initializes all the applications so for example in our case we only require internet explorer consider you are doing a bigger automation where you require internet explorer let's say an sap application a notepad or a calculator so all those things we want to initialize so re framework has kept that thing in uh, initialize all application so what this guy does this init all initialization we just read the configuration file we initialize all the application so let's say if we encounter some of the exception the notepad is not working or the config file is misplaced it straight away goes to the end process so in the end process what it does so if you see there is already the exception handling done by the re framework so for each of the xaml if i open let's say if i open this initialization also you will see everything is properly handled with the help of the try and the catch block and then this all the proper exception handling is done by re framework so initialization is successful it goes to the end process in the end process what we do we close all the application so when we say there is already a workflow file if i go to the project the project is already having under under the framework we have something called close a close all application dot xaml file so this is nothing but the soft closing of application but what happens if the soft closing fail i have clicked on the cross button of the internet explorer and the selector was not found this type of exception is also handled by re framework it will go to the this exception and it will try to kill the process then it will go and kill all the process so this exception handling everything is taken care by robotics enterprise framework for us so once the initialization is successful it will go and get the transaction data so this is the place where it goes to the either to the ui path orchestrator to get the data from the queue and if you are using some repetitive things and the tickets are available in the excel sheet or anywhere so this is the place where you get the transaction data so what happens in this flow it checks whether you have received a stop signal from orchestrator if everything is okay if uh, the transaction is not stopped it gets the transaction data and then it process the data in process.xaml so what happens here initialization is successful it go to get transaction if we have a new transaction so this is how easy re has made it for us so if there is a new transaction it goes to the process transaction and if there is no more transaction we straight away go to the end process and these are all the state machine now what happens in the process transaction so the process transaction is the place where the actual business logic is written so if you'll see there already the system logic and the business logic is separated right when we are dealing with the process so there are certain things which might happen right we can the first thing the process will be successful when the process is successful it will go again to the get transaction get the new transaction and this loop continue if there is some business exception again it will go and get the next data but if there is a system exception i crash or anything then it will go and it will go to the initialization where it will initialize everything and then it will come to the get transaction so if you will see this structure this entire structure fits for a repetitive process where we have queues or where we have lots of item in the excel but for our process this is a linear process so how do we accommodate that linear process in this flow so that is the objective of this tutorial video so next if you'll just open the get transaction data so there are two ways of doing that so if you'll see there is a xaml called get transaction data dot xaml if you'll open this workflow so you will get already written from the ui path which says that if you are using this for a linear process you just give the hard coded transaction value to one so what does that mean so that means whenever you are getting the transaction get transaction data so the new transaction value will be always by default set to one so that is one way of doing it and the other easy way is let's say for our process we just want the initialization and we just want the process to happen only once right i don't need this get transaction but i cannot just directly play with the re framework so what i can do is so this is the most important step of converting the re template to a linear process so whenever the initialization is successful i want it to process the transaction okay so what i have done is whenever the initialization is successful i want the robotics enterprise template to directly go to the process transaction and whatever happens in the process transaction even if there is a business failure you just end the process if there is a success you just end the process 
and even if there is a system exception you just end the process any which way we are going to execute it only once right and now we can get rid of this guy so now let's again rearrange everything and let's see what we have got okay so <clears throat> we have got the start then initialization so now we are telling ui path studio that whenever you initialize either you will get a success or you get a system exception if you get a system exception you end everything and if you are successful you go and uh, process the business logic and if you encounter any of the business logic you go to the end process so again here you also you can based on your requirement this arrow can be redirected again to the initialization phase or this success can be again redirected to the initialization phase. So that depends on how we want to have this one. But this is the best because whenever we have a linear process, it is going to execute only once. So let's say if I encounter a business exception also, I can re implement the retry inside the process transaction only. Right. So now our main file is ready. I'll just save the main file, close this one and I'll just go to main. Okay, so let's see what changes we have to made inside this three state machine. So first thing is the initialization. I go to try. So there is an object global object of system exception, which is of type exception. If I go here, you will see system exception is of object of type exception. And this is set to nothing. That means that if till end this object is nothing, that means that we have successfully completed the process. So if you'll go here and read the definition for success, it says system exception is not nothing. That means that how RE is treating, it has first defined the object to nothing. Then it runs this process, entire flow is run. And if still the object is nothing, that means we are successful. If the system exception is there, it will end the process. So this is how we read the state machine also. Okay, so this object is initialized. I want this thing. Now there is something called configuration file. So if you go to the RE project folder inside data, there is something called config.xlsx. So talking about the config, so config has three sheets, sheets, constant settings, constants and assets. So this file works on the key value pair. So key value pair means whenever we invoke this file from the RE framework, this is the key and this is the value. So for example, if I tell RE framework to get me the value for orchestrator queue name, it will give me this value. So as of now, let's delete everything. Okay. This is the config file. And then there is something called constants, which is already provided by UI path and the assets. Assets is where we keep the orchestrator assets. So this is the default format of the configuration file, which is provided by UI path. So I'll just save this one. So the main objective of config file is the value updation. So for our tutorial, we need the URL, right? So I will just create a URL entity and the value I'll just go here and I will go to the Acme logout and we can pass the value here as a good practice. We should always give the description. So now this answers the first question. What happens in future? The URL changes, right? So the, if in future the URL changes, we can have to just update this config here and the process will accommodate accordingly. In the robotics enterprise framework, we are going to refer this key, right? And it will return me this value. So this is the first benefit which the UiPath uh, RE framework gives us. Next, let's say I want to store the Excel name, right? So the Excel name now I want it as Acme data dot XLSX and Excel name. So I have also passed the Acme data here and let's say the asset name. So if I go, this is the asset name, right? So this will be a value for me here. And we'll just copy this format painter here. Okay. And I will just type it at asset for Acme. So <clears throat> what is the objective here? So I am telling RE framework that whenever I read this config file from the setting tabs, if I ask you the value for asset ACME, you give me this value. If I ask you for Excel name, you give me this value. If I ask you for URL, you give me this value. So this is the benefit which we get using the robotics enterprise template. Everything can be configurable. Now coming to the constant sheet, there are some things, let's say exception screenshot. So whenever there is an exception where I want to store the exceptions, right? So I can create a folder path, I can give the relative path here and then RE framework will 
uh, take it accordingly. So for example, when dealing with a web automation, if this page is taking more time to load, let's say in my dev environment, it is taking 30 seconds, but in my NFT or in my production environment, this day page is loading quite faster than 30 seconds. So what we can do is we can always have a timeout value here and we can just specify the seconds. Like what is the timeout value? And in production, if the value is getting increased or decreased, we don't have to do any changes in the automation. We have to just update the configuration file and the process will accommodate it. So this is the benefit which we get from the Acme and all the assets can be stored in the asset sheet. So I'll just save my changes in the config. I'll just remove the hyperlinks, save. And my config is ready. Okay. so. Let's again come back to the process and see what is happening here. We go to initialization. Here the config is read. If the first run, so see, if you'll see everything in it, all settings is the XAML, which is responsible for reading the config file and giving us the object. So I don't have to do any of the changes here. So if I just go here and read the import argument, so it is reading the configuration file, right? And it is reading which sheets, settings and the constant sheets. And it is giving me the output object as config. So this flow is already redundant. And so sorry, this flow is already designed in a very good way that you don't have to do anything. If you'll see, it is doing all the activity, all the homeworks for me, where it is retrieving the credential, it's storing in an object, dictionary object, then it is getting back me the value, everything, the try catch, the exception handling, everything is done by the UI path. So let's say if I pass an asset name who is which is not defined in the orchestrator. So then if you will give this, give this, you will get this exception. And at every position, the logs are available. So I don't have to worry about what happened wrong with my process. I can easily refer to the logs and I can uh, means mitigate the risk accordingly. So I will not change anything in this flow and it will, it has the capability to read the config and give me the config object. Next, this is the guy which is responsible for reading the queue name. Since we are not dealing with the queue, I don't require this one, right? So now we have one more XAML, which is called the kill all process. So what is the objective of kill all process? So whenever we start an automation, so let's say if you will see, I am interacting with Excel and I was interacting with uh, this Internet Explorer. So whenever the process is running, the process expects everything to be clean, right? So if let's say uh, the Excel is already open in my machine, I want the environment to the clean, right? So for that, what I have to do is I, I can leverage this Excel and I can kill the process. So if you'll just read this same, it says using kill process to force the termination of the windows. So what it will do is when we are running for the first time, we want to ensure the environment is clean. I don't want this instance to open. I don't want the Excel to be open. So for that to handle the kill process, we just have to drag and drop the kill process. And if you'll see, it has already uh, logged the message with the trace, trace log level, kill process and what application I want to kill. I have to just pass here. I E X P L O R E. Okay. So sorry, the process name here. Okay. So see if Internet Explorer is open. So now if I just run this file, it has killed the Internet Explorer. So whichever process I want to kill, I have to just drag and drop here and I will just pass the exe. Just remember, we don't have to pass the exe here. It understand that it is of type exe. We have to just pass the process executable name, I explore and exe. So my kill all process is done. So this is all what I have to do in RE framework. So till now I have just done this setting and the config settings. Let me go back uh, and close kill all process. So my kill all process is configured. If you'll see kill all process does not expect any argument because we are directly passing this one again inside the the setting is done inside the workflow so kill all process is done add log fields if we want to have a business process and i want to log the business logs so i can use this one as of now i will just get rid of this guy so now so this first run is completed so what exactly this first run is means it will check whether the process is executing for the first time or not so what this means is if the config object is already initialized, that means we have already read the configuration file. That means we are running it for the second time. Then RE framework will not execute any of this process and it will directly go to the next uh, next activity. So that is what the uh, first run means. 
okay so now the next xaml file which we want to look upon is the init all application if i just open here open the workflow so if you'll go to the arguments it is we already have the config object here and here it says opening application so now which application i want to open i have to just type the open browser and now it will ask me for the url now where do i get the url from so now i don't have to hard code anything if you will see the argument config object is already passed to this workflow so i can use the config object here in config and then next it will ask me for the key so what is the key let us go back and see in the config file the key is this url we go back to this guy paste dot to string right <clears throat> so what does this statement mean so i am telling ui path to open a browser now open browser ask me where do i get the url from i am telling open browser you go to the config object so the config object is, is in config and you get the value wherever the key is url so it will go to this config object which will have all this value and it will return me this value so that way i avoid the hard coding of my acme url in the this process flow in future if the url changes i only go have to here and update the value so if you'll see here i have just referenced this guy i am not using anywhere value so this is the benefit which re framework gives me okay i initialize all application is done so this framework can be used to oh, this xaml will be used to open all the application which you are dealing with let's say you are uh, dealing with a notepad or a calculator all those application will be open in this in it all application let's go back to the main so we have completed our try for this one and so let's say what happens if we encounter any kind of exception in opening or reading the configuration file it will go to the exception it will set the system error to exception and then it will go and go to the end process now end process is this flow so we are done with the initialization let's see what happens in the end process so the in process in the end process we have something called close all application dot xaml so if you'll see import arguments there is no arguments here because we are closing the arguments we can always go ahead and pass the arguments here so we can open the workflow and what close all application means it is the soft closing of application so what does soft closing mean so if i just open the internet explorer navigate again to the acme url so soft closing means i will properly log out from the application let me just log in okay i forgot my password i guess okay i made a spelling mistake in my username sorry my bad okay so what does a soft closing mean soft closing means i will properly log out of the application so when i fetch the data i will be available in this screen i want ui path to attach this browser this guy and then click on the log out button go here inside and click on the log out button and then hello ye point se kon picture hai ye point se kon picture hai ye point se kya kar raha hai uh was that for me uh, no mukesh yeah okay okay uh is usko aata hai ka okay and the next step in the soft closing we'll do is close the tab that means it will close this tab so this is this is the only setting which we have to do in the close all application so where i am telling you i path you attach the browser you click on the log out button and close the tab right now the question is what happens if by some case this selector is not valid right so as of now it is valid let's say this something changes and i was not able to find this selector now how does re handles that one so if i go here so if you'll see this entire close all application is encapsulated in a try block and in the exception 
it is telling and it is logging a warning message which says application failed to cross gracefully it will type the exception it will type the source also that at which source the exception has occurred and then it is calling a workflow which is called kill all process now if you'll remember kill all process if i just open the workflow this is the same workflow which we have configured already to clean the process right so this is how powerful re framework is and it has handled this sort of exception for us where we if we get any exception during the soft closing it will do the hard closing and it will lock the exception then i can go here and change the selector and whatever it is but your process will run without any fatal or any kind of exception right so this is this setting is already this thing is already provided by ui path Again, going back to the main. So we have done with the initialization. We are done with the end process. Now the main. So process transaction is the one where the actual business logic lies. So if you remember in the init initialization, there was an object of system exception, which was initialized. Now, when we go to the process transaction, similarly, similarly, one different object of type business exception is used, right? So business exception is a type of system dot business rule exception if you go here the business rule exception that means that we have encountered a business rule exception so what does a business rule exception mean so for example i am logging into the application and the credentials are not working right so that is not a system issue so that is something that the business has to take care or let's say i am extracting the data and there is no data available on the website i go to reports and when the bot was trying to extract the data there was no data at all right so the, all those kind of exception falls in the bucket of business exception so in the process transaction we have already a object of business exception that is set to nothing and then there is a main file which is called process.xaml which is already provided with an input of the configuration file and the transaction item so this transaction item is helpful when we are working with the queue so definitely this can also be changed but as of now we are not dealing with it so we can keep this to the default settings i'll just open the process.xaml so, so read here so this is the major steps of the process flow which are usually implemented so here we have can implement multiple invoke workflow so whatever the business logic should come in the process dot zambal right so now if we'll see we have separated our business logic from the system logic so what what benefit we get so if let's say you are dealing uh, with a very bigger project and there is a set of developers three four or five developers you can easily rewrite the process with the that you do the process dot xaml you do the end process you do the initialization part you do the end process part and again the process dot xaml is again divided into the small small components right so we were successfully able to modularize the code which means that we don't have the dependency on one one developer if one workflow fails we can easily plug and play and if tomorrow something one more process comes where exactly the same set of logic is required i just have to go and change the process transaction this and this guy remains same so that is the benefit which re gives us separating of the business logic from the actual system logic so i open the process transaction business exception is set to nothing i open the workflow and now we have already initialized the application right so next thing is we want to attach the browser okay and then we want it to attach to the already login window here this and then the same operation here we go here take a click activity want it to reports okay sorry that was healthcare so this is how we change the element indicate on screen to healthcare and then again one more click activity to download daily appointments okay okay i forgot one thing we have not logged in right so we in the initialization part so if i'll just come back so in the initialization part we have just read the configuration file we have initialized the initialized the application that means we have just opened the internet <clears throat> we have just opened the browser with this url right we have not uh, type the login password so we can do it here also but as a good practice since this is a part of the process and the business logic we will do it here so i'll just delete this guy okay we'll go back we'll log out 
So this will be the state which will be available whenever the process lands to the process.xml. We go here, we take an attach browser. Okay. We attach it to this Acme. Okay. Next thing is the type into. We type into email. Again, next thing, similarly way. Type secure text. We point it to the password. And then in the activities, I take a click. And I click it to the login, right? So now, <clears throat> where do I get the credential from? I have to get it from the orchestrator. But now, in the get credential, instead of hard coding the asset name here, what I will do is I will use the config object here. So if I just do it like this, I will pass the config name and then I will pass the config value. So what was the asset? So the asset name was asset Acme, right? So what benefit we are getting here? So in future, if somebody goes to my cloud orchestrator and delete this one or creates a new credential store, uh, for at the Acme credential, I don't have to go and update this activity. I can always go to the configuration file, change this guy and the process will accommodate my changes. So get credential, it will read the asset name from this key. So I am telling you path. you go to the config object, fetch the value of the asset Acme and then give me the user ID and the password, which I will store in two variables of username and password so when i type hit control k it gives me a variable of the type that is required so password will be of type secure text so i type the username here and the output which we have got will type it to the secure text that is the password okay so this is a small part of the process so let's go to the main so I will again go to the process.xml. Let's see what all settings we have to do here. In the process.xml, we have written, we will write all the logic. As of now, I've just written the logic just to open the workflow. Let's see some of the other settings which are available in the process.xml. So I was doing some of the operation. The bot is doing some of the operation and it's encounter a business rule exception. So the, sorry. So the business rule exception is set to the exception object. If the exception is of system type, the object will be set to the system exception. But now the question is how will RE framework know that whether this is a business exception or this is a system exception so that we will set. One more thing in the process transaction is there is a something called finally. So finally is the block which is responsible for setting the transaction status when you are running in a non-linear type of automation when you are working with queues or when you are working with the Excel or some kind of repetitive stuff. So this is the guy which is responsible for setting the transaction status. So as of now, we are not dealing with this one. So we can comment this one or get rid of the finally block. So now if I again go to the try block, so in the try, the business exception is set to nothing and the in the process.xml we have implemented a flow which is reading the credential object from the configuration file and all those things is done right so let's see go ahead and run the process and see if it is working so for the demo i'll just open this one and i'll just keep the close config and i'll just open the excel open let's try to run and when i run the flow the expectation is it should kill this data.xlsx it should kill this guy also and uh, it should log in right so let's go ahead and run the file so the bot is executing it has killed both the instances that means kill all process was executed now it is it has initialized all the applications now it is in the uh, process.xml voila awesome so we were successfully able to execute up to this with the help of the linear process. I quickly open this flow and the next step similarly we can do is in the in the way next step I have clicked on the login button. Now the bot is available till this stage. Okay, so it has see if you'll see there is nothing open here. So what has happened is it has again process the XAML, everything was successful. So we have navigated it to the successful and it has navigated to the end process where it has tried to soft close the application. So if I go to the output, you will see 
first killing of the process then opening of the application then closing of the application so everything was flawless so that's why it has closed the application so what i can do is i will just open the process dot workflow and i will just open the explorer sorry hack me site let's complete the workflow quickly Okay, I always log in. Okay, so we were we have successfully automated till this stage. Next, we again take an attach browser. Okay, we point it to this guy. We go ahead and take a click. We point it to healthcare. Next, one more click. We want to open a sub menu. We press F2. It will pause the recording and I open the sub menu. I click on daily download appointments. Now I will be on this stage. Next was just to extract the data. So I go here, attach the browser again to the screen, and then I take a data scraping. Same logic. Yes. Okay, finish. Okay, let's say I want to extract only it for one page. No. And the data scraping wizard will be inside this guy. Now, <clears throat> similarly, I want now to write the data in an Excel sheet, right? So I can take a right range. I will take the system file workbook because I don't want to use the Excel application scope here. So I'll take this one. Now, the workbook path so uh, now the our requirement was we don't want to store with the help of the data.xlsx right so i can easily go to the config object and pass the key for the excel name so i can go to the configuration file so this answers what happens if tomorrow we want to change the file name to let's say something acme data.xlsx so i can use this key Excel name to here, here, and then the data table will be okay. Extract data table, just drag inside here. Why I'm doing this because the extract data table scope is limited to these two. So, extract data table. One more thing here this sheet name, this range, everything can now come from the config file. So, let's say I want to store this in a different sheet name. And the sheet name i want to store it in a sheet name which called data okay so what i can do is i can use this key again in the sheet name also so in config of this key dot to string all of these settings can be again stored in the configuration file so i am done with this go to the main so I'll just close this guy also, save. Okay, and let's try to run the automation with the help of the RE framework. So if you'll see, it has opened the Acme site. Okay, I forgot to log out this one, right? So this is the kind of exception handling which we as a developer has to think. So when the portal is already logged in, so we should have a mechanism that will check if the portal is already logged in, you would you should check the logout button is available, then you should write a logic to hit on the logout and then continue the automation. So that is not in the scope of this uh, tutorial. So that is one thing which we have missed. So we should always check whether the application is already logged in. If it is logged in, just log out of the application and then do all of your processing. So the, I think the bot is trying to extract the data. Okay, let's go back to the project. Hit refresh and see a file of Acme data is available. If I just open the file. So 
the sheet name is changed to data and the bot has extracted the data. We have stopped the processing for the other tabs. So that's why it has extracted data only from the one sheet. One thing I want to show here is the output. Okay. So if you will see, I have purposefully kept an exception in the so, uh, close all application because there was some exception uh, because what I have done is I have pointed the close all application to the first window and the bot is available in the data scraping wizard. So now if you'll see there was no exception which was given by the UI path even though there was an exception. So if I go to the output you will say the execution has started. It killed all the process. It opened the IE. Then when in the process it tried to soft kill the application by clicking this button but this button was not available right so what re framework did it logged in a warning type of message which says that it has failed to cl uh, close the application gracefully that's why because of the selector issue so this selector it was not able to find right in the close application so that's why it went and forcefully kill the application and as a business or a process we were all covered from this end so this is how powerful the re framework is and this is how we implement a linear process in the re framework so if i just go back again to my slide so let's see some of the benefits which we have leveraged from the re framework first one uh, <coughs> We were successfully able to read the configuration file without writing a single line of the code. That means I was successfully able to create the object, create a dictionary of string and object, and I was able to read the file without writing a single code, right? That was all plug and play. So that is kind of settings which RE frameworks gives me, and that can be used for a linear process. Next, we have not we have seen how kill process was able to successfully clean the environment and we have seen the soft closing and the hard uh, hard closing so to clean the application everything was handled by the re framework we were successfully able to open and close the application gracefully and we have seen in case of the applications are not closed gracefully how re handles that for us our business logic was separated that means we have written the business logic in process.xml file that means in future if the uh, code or anything changes we don't have to change the entire automation we can just go ahead and change the thing in the process.xml file right we develop the process in modules that means that our process was can be divided to separate separate developers and process can be divided by one developer in it can be developed by one developer process can be developed by one process so this is the benefits which we got from the re framework so let's quickly recap here so we created a linear process then we seen what things were missing in the implementation post that we converted the robotics template to a template that can accommodate a linear process then we put the linear process in the updated template then we discussed the benefits what we got uh, using the re framework so that was all and we are on time i guess thank you for watching and Yeah, so Mukesh, can you see? You can see some of the questions on the chat. Thank window. you, Mukesh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, uh, I'm not able to access the chats. No, sure. Guys, can you unmute and ask question, or Prinka, in case you can read and. Uh, I'm not able to see the chats, Vivo. Is it? I will just stop the sharing once, and then I'll just see. Yeah, I can see it now. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, 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 I can only see that I'm not able to see that. What will be the use of the set transaction XAML using the lean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what will be the use of set transaction XAML, right? So Ashuto, set transaction will be used whenever we are using a process with the which is having a linear or linear uh, sorry which is having a q item or let's say a number of items so in our case it was a single transaction so what we could have done is we can you we could have set the transaction number default to one and then use the set transaction to every time make it success so in the linear process ideally that does not make a sense in the linear process so does that answer your question ashutosh Okay, I'll uh, take that. Mukesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Mukesh, Vinod here. Uh, Hi, Vinod. Thanks for the session. Yes, uh, so I have a question similar to, you know, uh, regarding yeah. this set status transaction to XAML file. Okay, uh, yeah. So, but it is again about the non-linear process, okay? Yes, yes. So, so, so actually, uh, set... Wanted, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to understand about, you know, business exception and uh, system, system exception, right? What happens is sometimes uh, what I am doing, 
I usually remove this uh, system exception part in this status transaction because what happens is it goes into loop. I don't know why. So even though I increment the transaction number, still mm -hmm. uh, it goes into loop. So I don't understand why that happens. I mean, so, and also, like, uh, when when should we use system exception? Because it it, it uh, when it goes back to initialization, it will reset everything, right? right? So when it comes back to get transaction data again, it will start from the beginning, mm -hmm. which I don't want to retry. So especially okay. when I don't want to retry, should I use exception? Uh, that's so, the yeah. So if you will see whenever RE framework does a try catch, right? So in the catch section, it is uh, passing that system object to this exception. So now let's say, uh, let's say I have encountered some exception in the process.xml taking your scenario. Okay. So there mm -hmm. is a system exception, but I don't want it to uh, retry, right? So what I can do is I can just go here and handle the exception itself here. So I don't want to set this object to exception, right? So there I is, there see. are, sorry, oh, sorry, see sorry, sorry, my bad. I have just yeah. stopped the sharing to see the chats. My bad, extremely sorry. No problem. Yeah. Okay. So uh, is it visible now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, if you'll see for the exception handling, we have activities called try catch through and throws, right? So whenever okay. there is an exception handling, whenever there is an exception, be it a system exception, be, is a, be it a business exception, right? So always, if you don't want the default uh, means exception handling of the RE framework, you can just delete this guy and write your own logic. Let's say if I encounter an exception and I want to send an email, right? So I can just in the catch section, I will just type the outlook email. Let's say, uh, I, let's say I just put a right line. I just lock the exception somewhere and I don't use the throw activity. So if you are familiar with the concept of try catch through, so yes, yes. that, yeah, right. So you can handle the exception here itself and do not, don't throw it to the parent, right? So parent is the main and the child is the process. So if I don't throw anything to the main or to the init, then it will not, not retry. So you can just get, get rid of this guy and then you can try that okay. one and handle so, the exception. So will it go to the, will it go to the next uh, item? Yes. That again depends on how you have handled your uh, set transaction status. If you have used the set transaction status, then it will again go to the queue item. Then it will again fetch the item. So the best way to is to run the process in the debug mode. You just put a debugger and see where okay. exactly the, uh, this yellow cursor is going. And then you can uh, accordingly take the next step. So debug is the key. Sure, sure. I, I will try that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will just stop share because I'm not sure why I'm not able to read the questions. So the next question is why don't you use the asset sheet in the configuration file? You defined your credential assets. So yes, definitely we should have used the assets in the asset sheet. So asset settings and these are the three different sheet. Ideally, as a good practice, we should have used the assets in the credential asset in the asset sheet only. So that does not make a difference because our framework already reads all the three sheets, but uh, for a good practice. So since I was doing it quick, faster, but yes, ideally it should have been used in the uh, credential sheet only. Yes. But Ari was, will be able to handle that one because we have seen in the init, I will just share my screen again. So if you will see in the init all settings in the first run, in this guy, right? Okay. So if you'll just import the arguments here. So these are the settings and the constants. So this settings and the constants were only referred here. So if you want to read the different sheet, we can just add our sheets and we can tell our framework to read the asset sheet also. So that is the reason. So yes, definitely you can go ahead and place everything in the asset sheet also. Okay. I will just go to different question. Hmm. Can you explain the business rule exception? What are the, so, okay. So can you explain the business rule exception? So business rule exception is something, uh, that is related to the business. Okay. So let's say you are, uh, doing automation and, uh, you are extracting some data the way we were doing in the, uh, this one in the demo and the data is not available, right? The, now the data table will be null for you and you are attempting to write something on the Excel, right? So at that time you might get an exception which says that the data table is empty. So that is a kind of business exception. The other business exception is, let's say we want to save this file to a business share drive and the business share drive is not accessible. So how the bot will write to that uh, 
drive so that is a business exception some other business exception is you are writing a credential of the business and the credential itself is wrong so the account is locked so as a developer you can cannot handle that no that is something that business has to take care a very good example of the business exception is let's say you are doing with some automation for a banking or a finance where there is a threshold so you want to have a check where uh, let's say the transaction is less than 1 million so that 1 million is a value you set in configuration file and if some day the value is 2 million you raise a business exception saying that okay today i am stopping the process because the breach of the threshold has been made to 2 million so that is a business exception sanjana has raised a question what are the disadvantages of re framework so i don't see any disadvantage in the re framework so if you are you have a very small process uh, which is just to copy paste on the data then why should you come and i i i frankly don't see any disadvantage of the re framework apart from being that it takes a quite a little time to understand the re framework if you understand it correctly then it is a very good thing to use so to understand it correctly we have a dedicated tutorial on the uh, academy.uipart.com if you'll just go here and you will sell deep dive into robotics enterprise framework it explain each and every activity in detail yeah so said any more questions or anything from anyone guys if you have any question just unmute and ask and one more thing that you know uh, currently mvp applications are open and mvp if you do not know that mvp award is the highest recognition program that we offer to our community members for their outstanding contribution innovation and you know whatever contribution they have been doing in the community so just in case <clears throat> you have not applied please apply that there could be a reason that we are not connected and we are not able to see what you have done so on this page you can find an application where you can share what you have been doing and there could be a possibility that you may become a mvp for 2021 and apart from that we are also running a very interesting challenge on forum which is called advent of ui path 2020 so in case you know if you are interested in learning ui path or you are already a champion or champ in ui path this uh, uh, this month we will have eight challenges and you will have around close to 72 hours to solve it so just visit this one and see what are the challenges is coming and we will have some draw on 25th and you could be lucky one to get something mm -hmm. 